Hello everyone, I'm Tiaren from Singapore Math Tutors. So today we'll be looking at finding squares, cute square roots, and cute root by prime factorization. Okay, so let's start. So square roots um, and squares, right? So squares of five, it's five squares. So we have talked about this before. We can say it as five square, square of five, or five to the power of two. Right, they're all equals to 25 because 5 times 5. So, But today we'll learn a new thing, which is square roots. Uh, so square root of 25 is this here, right? So um, it's quite interesting. If you punch into your calculator square root of 25, you get 5. But then um, the answer to square root of 25 can be 5 or minus 5. So that's why I have this plus minus 5 here. Because... Um, 5 times 5, we get 25, right? But then we have another case whereby we take minus 5 times minus 5 is equal to 25 as well. So therefore, there are two answers when we square root 25. And then you might be wondering, like, why is it that uh, square root 25 is equal to plus minus 5? Like, why? Because square root 25 can be written as this as well. Okay, it is uh, also, we, we can also say that 25 is to the power of half, right? They're both equivalent. So, since uh, square root of 25 is, we can rewrite this 25 to the power of half, right? And then 25 is equal to 5 square here. Okay, so uh, in later... Uh, in the f for future lesson, you'll see that uh, we go through such sentences and then you see that we can actually times it 2 times half to get 1 because of these brackets here. Okay, so 2 times half, we get 1, so it's 5. Okay, so I, um, I hope this is clear. And then you have to know what it means by perfect square. So what is a perfect square? So 9 is a perfect square because when we square root 9, we get plus minus 3, we get 3, which is a whole number, correct? Or we square root 25, 25 is a perfect square because when we square root it, we get a whole number. Unlike if we say square root 8, right, we wouldn't get because it's 2.8 something, right? So it's not a whole number, so therefore 8 is not a perfect square. So you have to know the terms when, say, some question asks you, so this, num this number is a perfect square, or your answer is a perfect square. So you should roughly know that the numbers can, when you square root it, it is a whole number. Okay, so let's move on. Um, so here we have using prime factorization to find the square root of a certain number. So for example, we want to... Uh, find the answer when we square root 1156. So we do prime factorization. So first we just break it down. So 578, we break it down to this. And then the next one, we have 298. We break it down again. Okay. And then what we have is this here. Okay. So since, since we have like this thing occurred two times, right? So we have two sets of two times seventeen times uh two times seventeen, right? When we square root, root it, therefore we only left with one set of this. So therefore it's two times seventeen and the final answer is plus minus thirty four because if you check it, okay, minus thirty four times minus thirty four will give you one one five six okay right let's move on to page 17 whereby we do cubes and cube root uh, so the cube of five is written as five cube or five to the power of three okay because which is equals to 125 because five times five times five give you 125 then the cube root of 125 is written like that Okay, so cube root of 125 is equals to 5. Okay, because 125 is equal to 5 cubed. So 5 times 5 times 5. So it happens 3 times. So you kind of like break it down 
So you only take the final answer here. Like that you you kind of like see it as groups. So cube roots means that you would take from the three groups one of them. Okay? So or you can think in another way, thinking that says and in this is way whereby we'll be going through uh, in the future lesson again. So a uh, cube root of 125 can be written as 125 to the power of one third. Okay, so we can write it like that. Okay, it's the same. So cube root of 125 power. Uh, so we five cube is 125, right? Like that. Okay, because they are the same, and then. Like I say just now, the brackets like that, you can multiply it. So 3 times 1 third is 5 to the power 1, so the answer is 5. Okay, so a cube, a perfect cube is a number whose cube root is a whole number. So for example, I want to cube root uh, 8, right? It is 2. Why? Because uh, 2 cube is equals to 8. So let's like say 2 cube is 2 times 2 times 2 uh, times 2 so we have 3 groups of 2 here so we just pick 1 so the answer is 2 so this is the one that produces an answer that is a whole number right but then say if we want to like cube root uh, 9 no it's not because we will get an answer that is not uh, a whole number okay so 8 is a perfect cube, uh, 125 is a perfect cube, alright? Um, 27 is a perfect cube because 3 cube is 27. Okay, so uh, let's move on. So when we talk about a negative number, we want to cube a negative number, right? We will get a negative answer here. Okay, so... Because minus 5 times minus 5 is 25, but then 25 times minus 5 is minus 125, okay? So you have to be very clear that when we cube a negative number, we get a negative answer, okay? Similarly, if we cube root, uh, if we cube root a negative number, we will get a negative answer, okay? like that so this this the logic here is the same minus five if you can't see it three and then cube root is to the power of one over three so minus five minus three times uh not minus three sorry uh, three times one over three is one so Minus 5 to the power 1 is 5, minus 5. Okay, so um, this is uh, important to know for negative number. Because square is different, like no matter how you square anything, it is still positive, right? Minus 5 times minus 5, right? It's still uh, 25, right? Minus 5 square. Right, and also remember, very important, that uh, you can't square root uh, a negative number, okay? You cannot square root a negative number, because this will be covered in uh, A-levels, it's not in the O-level thing. But if you want to know more about it, you can go uh, research on imaginary number, imaginary numbers, okay? And this is to learn more about um, square rooting negative number. So if you were to type in your calculator a negative number, uh, square rooting a negative number, you're most likely to get an error because this is uh, of a much higher level thing. It's, a, it's actually imaginary, okay? So uh, let's move on. So, um, to pay, um, okay, so the next one we'll try to do an example on cube root, right? So, um, 
where we cube root um, 64, right? If you bring your calculator, you get 4, but like this question asks us to do it by prime factorization, right? So what we do is uh, simply just break it down quickly, okay? So you quickly do the breaking down. Three, 32 is 2 times 16, 16 is this. So, so once you get this n here, which are all the prime factors, right? Then you want to kind of group it in three. So you have this one group, two group, three group. So your end answer is two times two, which is four. Uh, ignore this. Okay. So uh, cube uh, cube root of sixty four is four. Okay. So so this is uh, very simple. Um, finding cube root by prime factorization is is quite simple. Or s square root. They are all quite simple, but like. Uh, the most difficult part will be when you're asked like uh, more higher level questions like problem sums questions and stuff like that. Okay, uh, it's more likely that you'll be asked on uh, something that is more difficult than this example here. So in the next episode, we'll be going through uh, standard O level questions um, that will be quite challenging because as you can see, the numbers here are quite big now. They're not like the usual numbers that we we do in uh, the examples so um i i hope that the next uh, episode will be useful um thank you and see you in the next episode bye